Howdy folks, Dave of Chaos Crafting here. Today, I'm gonna to start a fun and challenging project. I'm gonna build a boat, a dragon boat specifically. The dragon head prow is what defines it as a dragon boat. This comes from your classic Viking ship. But I want to use this for my D&D &D campaign, so I need some roleplay space, like a structure on the back of the ship, a captain's quarters. I was inspired for this build by the WizKids Skycoach miniature I painted last year. That was a great addition to the game. I also know that WizKids does make a larger size galleon, but it's like $150. I have XPS foam and a Proxon. I'm not gonna spend $150. Unfortunately, this is gonna be a complex project. This will take multiple videos to capture everything. So in this video, I will focus on building just the hull. Other videos will cover carving the dragon head, applying texture, building the mast and sails, and general detailing of the fiddly bits. All right, who's ready to carve some XPS foam? I started by looking at actual model ship building instructions. Yeah, there's a lot to them. I did notice they all used contour lines to define the hull. Focusing just on the contour lines, I jumped into a drawing program and quickly drew the shape and contour I wanted for the cutting template. The idea here is to create a cardstock template you can use with your Proxon to cut precise layers of XPS foam for the hull. You don't need a drawing program to do this. I've done this exact same thing just by sketching out on graph paper. <laughs> I'm gonna use every tool in my toolbox. Alrighty. So now I'm just showing off. I got my wife one of these card cutting machines and I decided, hey, why don't I give it a shot? She's not using it. I threw the design in. It did its little CAD logic and cut it out. I still needed to do a little bit of trimming, but it worked. And like I said, this is optional. You can just draw this on cardstock cut it out with scissors, don't have to get complicated, it all works. With your cardstock templates cut, grab 10 pieces of half inch thick XPS foam. Tape the template to the foam and cut with your Proxon. In theory, you could do this with just a sharp utility knife. But you know, I, I love my Proxon and I use it whenever I can. For this application, I have the heat on the wire set to low. I, I don't want to cut too fast to make a ragged edge. <laughs> well, use a utility knife to trim all this down, so I, I guess it doesn't really matter. I mean, do whatever, whatever floats your boat. Now you should have two stacks of foam that look a lot like this. Yep, looks a lot like those contour lines from the ship designs. Following these lines with a utility knife will make carving the bow easy peasy. Hot glue the layers together from largest to smallest. Don't use too much glue and keep the glue towards the straight edge of the layer. Why? Oh, oh glad, glad you asked. Um, the glue will actually add thickness, like a millimeter or two. Over multiple layers, this will add up and it'll make precision impossible. I'll, I'll show you how I dealt with that a little later on. 
So press the layers together tightly and let any excess glue ooze out the flat side where it's easy to clean off. So here's the fun part, creating tiny pink foam flakes. No, 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 that's wrong. I mean, carving the ship's bow. Standard disclaimer, be very careful carving with your utility knife. Follow the contour lines and slowly smooth down the raised edges. This is gonna take a little bit of time. If you were wondering why I chose to break this task down into two parts, it's because of tool ergonomics and symmetry. It was easier for me to carve the left and right sides independently. When I tried carving the bow as a single piece, I ended up with a wonky keel line. And like, no one wants a wonky keel line. Now this utility knife has about a three inch cutting length. It only made sense for me to cut material that was less than three inches. In this case, the height of the bow is two and a half. That's the tool ergonomics part. Just easier to cut with the tool I have on hand. Okay, after much carving and many pink flakes later, you should have something that looks like this. A very satisfying, smooth looking ship's hull, a left and a right side. As I mentioned earlier, the aft is just straight lines and bevels. I start with two XPS foam blocks that are the same width and thickness as the bow. I glue them together and eyeball an angle for the bevel on the rear of the ship. Just something that looks cool. I adjust the hot wire on the proxon to match the angle and then I'm going to cut the rear of both blocks. All right, with that done, we now need to match the angle of the bow. Align the bow and the aft blocks together and mark the angle to cut. Here you see the bow and aft together. Yeah, it, it does look stubby. My vision includes a 12 inch section in the middle to make the overall length of the ship about 24 inches. I make sure all the parts are the same height. The solution I alluded to earlier on height includes running them through the proxon one more time to remove any extra thickness added by the hot glue. So we've got the bow all carved. We've got the aft carved. One thing I did notice is I'm not really happy with the shape of this. It, it doesn't look very boat-like. What I think I'm going to do is make a second one exactly like this. And then like trim off the edge Yes, exactly like that. It's a little bit more work, but I felt it artistically necessary. All right, let's do a size check. So we've got the front of the boat. This is gonna be the center. This is gonna be a 
12 inch edition. So yes, it's gonna be a little over 24 inches when we're done. Continuing the Viking theme, I found some meat in my house. It's a wine made from fermented honey. Oh yeah, that's sweet. I'm also breaking video continuity by changing my backdrop. It's actually a DM screen one of my best friends built me. I, I feel it really fits with this nautical theme. With that done, I'm adding the 12 inch section to the middle. I will use the bow to mark the angle for cutting the bevel on the bottom piece. It may be the mead, but I'm really not being very precise right now. You don't have to be, because I'll tell you a secret. We're gonna cover all of this up with a texture layer when we're done. So, bevel both sides of the bottom. Just watch your thumbs. The hot wire is hot. <laughs> Ask me how I know. If you did it right, it'll match perfectly. Next, structural integrity. To ensure this boat does not break apart in heavy seas, I will add an additional block at both ends. This provides greater surface contact for the hot glue. Man, what was the alcohol content on that mead? 18%? No wonder why I'm just slapping stuff together. Since this is going to be a multi-part series, think about checking that like, subscribe, notification, you know, the standard YouTube yada yada. That will let you know when I post up new content. With the bow and aft attached, it's time to add the sides of the hull. I will bevel and cut a single piece of half inch thick foam for the sides. You know, if you're looking at this and thinking, man, this doesn't look very neat, just, just keep in mind, we're gonna add a texture layer on top of this, just like a veneer. This is just creating a solid structure that we can attach everything to. You should be able to use the same bevel angle that you used to cut the base for the side. Oh, oh, I, I did forget to mention, I cut the side hull height a quarter of an inch short. This will allow me to place a quarter of an inch sub deck on top of that. That will uh, allow the inclusion of things like a mast anchor and a hold opening. Dang, the, that meat is, is really getting to me. So yes, so yes, the next video will either be carving the dragon head prowl or applying the texture veneer. That should take care of the whole planking and the deck surface.
as always, I do hope you've enjoyed the video. I hope you enjoy the content I'm creating. I'm not doing this as a side gig or a hustle. This is just my passion. I like doing this. And my wife convinced me to put it on video. So that's all I'm doing. Now, now if you'll excuse me, th this meat is telling me I, I should take a nap. So, so until next time, peace.